Welcome everyone to this lecture series on distribution management. This is already lesson number two and in this video we will be talking about the marketing channels in the supply chain. Now if you are new to this channel consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever we will be uploading videos like this. Now if you'll also see QR codes displayed in your screen it means that there are sources that are coded in the slides that will be displayed in your screen meaning you can scan on that QR code and then you will be redirected to the website which is the source of our discussion in this particular video now let's go back to the discussion on marketing channels in the supply chain now there are four basic types of marketing channels direct channels intermediaries or the use of intermediaries next is the dual distribution channels or multiple distribution channels for that matter and then we have reverse distribution channel now direct distribution channels is the most traditional way of uh, distributing goods and services meaning it is the means of distribution that is adapted from time immemorial direct selling is intended to provide the product directly to the customers without necessarily going through complex supply chain when a company manufactures a product it sells directly towards the target market the next one is the use of intermediaries now Intermediaries are any individual, person, or organization that is in the middle of the distribution process from the manufacturers towards the target audience or the target market. Now, intermediaries could be in the form of an internet or in the form of a website, or it could be in a form of a cargo forwarding or in a form of a delivery service as long as the manufacturer utilizes these particular channels in order that the product will arrive at the target market or the target customer intermediaries could be wholesalers retailers convenience stores and all other channels of distribution apart from the apart from the manufacturer and the consumer so anything in between are called the intermediaries next is the dual distribution dual distribution describes a wide variety of marketing arrangement by which the manufacturer or the wholesalers uses more than one channel simultaneously to reach the end user they may sell directly to the end users or the end consumers as well as sell other companies sell to other companies i mean for resale or for retail using two or more channels to attract the same target market can sometimes lead to channel conflict uh, let's say for example you have a distributor in a particular uh, geographic location let's say for example you have a you are a manufacturer of cars now if you're a manufacturer of cars and then you decide to sell directly of course this is a problematic uh, idea it will not work in the car industry but let us just say for example that you want to directly sell these particular cars that you manufacture directly towards your target customers and now you also have a distributor in that particular similar geographic location and so what will happen is there will be a conflict of your channel strategy it will create what we call as cannibalization meaning one channel will kill the other and it will be at some point very expensive on the side of the channel partner 
or those that are those that are tasked to do what we call as a direct selling so dual distribution must be properly managed in order to prevent these particular problems in the distribution of goods and services next one is the reverse channel it is a distribution channel where goods that are either damaged or at some point have served its purpose will return back to the original manufacturer for recycling or refurbishing now if you notice many of the distribution channels that we are we were talking about and it almost always start from the manufacturer towards the wholesaler and then the retailer and then the consumer market or the consumers but in this case it is coming from the consumers and then slowly and gradually deliver the product back to the manufacturers and one of the best examples of this is bottles for the, for soft drinks for soda now after the bottles are actually used by the individual target consumers it will be returned back to the manufacturers for cleaning and reprocessing and then it will be delivered once again towards the target customers so that backward delivery of the product is called a reverse channel there are those who will collect these particular bottles and then send it back towards the manufacturers. So that is a reverse channel. Now in the channel selection, there are several elements that we have to take into consideration before deciding who will you partner in a particular geographic location. First is consumer preferences. The main consideration for channel selection for business distribution is the behavior and the buying habit of the intended customers. What are their preferences? Where do they prefer to buy? What are their wants and needs? And when will these wants and needs manifest to the consumers and customers? So you have to determine the preferences of the consumers and the customers so that you can strategically place your products, goods and services on a visible context so that consumers will be able to purchase your product easily and efficiently. Next is the brand. Before selecting a channel or a channel partner, you should be thinking about the brand the selection of the distributor or a, of a distributor may also be affected by the brand or the channel partner brand image of the channel partner will be the same as the manufacturer in the eyes of the consumers example selling luxury goods in a store that is intended for low-cost goods destroys the image of the company and the product itself and so you have to choose exactly what type of branding strategy you want to adapt in your in your product and if you want to create a, a an image a brand image of luxury it is highly recommended to sell products in places where luxury is the language right so what you're going to do is when you are selling expensive products, don't select distributors that sells low-cost products because that will damage your branding strategy. Next is cost. How much does it cost to utilize these particular channels for the purpose of delivering the goods and services to the intended customers? Will it cost you a lot? Is it a calculated risk when you select these particular channel partners will this be a profitable channel partner 
If not, then I suggest that we'll just leave it away and find another way that will reduce your cost and will still produce the same intended outcome. Now, when you are in a business, especially in the modern time, when you are in a business, there are a lot of channels upon which you can actually send out information or partner with in terms of educating your target audience. So, so in the delivery of information, in the education of your customers about your goods and services, you can use different websites, you can use different websites and other resources that are available in the internet to send out your information and hopefully it will arrive at your target audience. And so in the modern time where we utilize the social media, it is not so difficult to send out your message towards your target audience so that they will know about you and will have a knowledge about your products, goods, and services. And in turn, you will be able to enter into that particular geographic territory and begin partnership with those institutions or probably distributors that are willing to sacrifice and put effort in the delivery of your products towards your target audience. Now, remember that the first thing that you have to think about is how knowledgeable are your customers about your product. And so you have to educate them and then select the right and correct channel partner that will effectively send out your goods and services towards your intended customers. I hope that you learned something. See you in the next video.